Right. This is the cell biology knowledge test, right? All the information, all the main parts of the information that you'll need for the GCSE uh, cell biology unit. Now, this is then name all the parts of the animal and plant cells and what are their functions. Now, I've put three little P's, right? They are the three that are only in a plant and not in an animal. Okay, so it doesn't mean to say they all start with a P. So, number one, looking at the diagram there, right, now is a chloroplast. Okay, and its job is to whoops, absorb light energy and act as the process of photosynthesis. Okay, so what you need, you need, you need to know the full balanced equation for that. Number two is a ribosome. Okay, and that is protein synthesis. Okay, so that's where proteins are made, right? But don't write down make protein, always write down protein synthesis. Number three, I'm not going to put this in the box, is mitochondria. Okay, that is then the where um, energy is released. And it is the site of respiration. Okay, and again, you need to know, just like the photosynthesis, you need to know the full balanced equation for that. Number four is cytoplasm. And that is the site of the chemical reactions. Okay, so that's where all the kind of chemical reactions take place. Next one is the nucleus. The nucleus, what it does is it contains DNA um, and it's kind of kind of controls the cell. Number six is the cell membrane. And what that does is it controls movement in and out of the cell. P1, we've got a cell wall. Oh God, two L's, two more L's. And what that does is it supports the cell and keeps its structure. Right, and that is then made of cellulose, which is kind of an additional thing. And the last one is a vacuole. Okay, and the vacuole contains cell sap and it also maintains its shape. Right, then what we've got is we've then got bacteria cells. Okay, so name all the parts of the bacteria cell and what are their functions. Now, what you could do is you could do the labels around the outside of that. Okay, but I'm just going to kind of uh, do initial sort of initial sig um, symbols for it. So, it's genetic material. Then what we've got is we've got cytoplasm. The inner wall then is the cell membrane. The very very outer wall is the slime capsule. Then we've got the wall in between, which is then the cell wall. Then we've got plasmids. And then we've got flagella around the outside. Okay. Now, I'm now going to go through the different parts of the cell. And at the bottom, this time what I've done is I've done a little section at the bottom that says part of the cell that's not always present. So there's two of those on the bacteria cell here, right, that aren't always present, but the others always are. So part of the cell is genetic material okay so that's this one here the genetic material and what they are is the dna and it's the instructions for the cell okay next one down is cytoplasm okay this has then got exactly the same role as it did in the um, the animal and plant cell we talked about before it's where the chemical reactions occur. Next one round is the cell membrane. 
All right, and what this does is it controls movement in and out of the cell. Cell wall. It supports the cell and keeps its shape. Okay, so exactly the same as it was in the previous ones. Plasmid. Okay, is also a bit like the genetic material are instructions for the cell. Okay, it's just a different version. So obviously you can see on the bacteria it's got no nucleus, and that's why it's a prokaryote, so it has absolutely no nucleus, no membrane-bound organelles. The two at the bottom, right, are not always present. So the first one I'm going to do is a slime capsule, right? And what that is, it's kind of like a sticky layer on the outside. That's a sticky, okay, sticky layer. So if you kind of cough it out and it's sticky, then it'll stick to something and then get picked up easier. But for some that live in water, there'd be no point in having that. And then the last one is flagella, right? And that is then used for movement. So again, right, if you've got a, a bacteria that is kind of living on your skin, it doesn't need flagella because it's not doing any movement, but then some of them do. Question number three, right? What are the two main types of cell? I mentioned kind of them before, right? So, well, I mentioned one of them. So we've got eukaryote, okay, or eukaryotic. Let's go for eukaryotic. And then the other one is prokaryotic. Special feature of a eukaryotic is that it contains a nucleus and organelles. Well, organelles, because that's all the little things in there, like your mitochondria, have membranes. Okay. Prokaryote, it has no nucleus and no membrane bound organelles. Okay. So I always kind of think it as like, okay. Um, it has nothing in it, no kind of little structures in it that got a bag around the outside. It's like a nucleus, it's kind of got a little bag around the outside, even though it's not really a bag, right? But prokaryotes don't have any bags around the outside of them, where eukaryotic do, right? You've got to think that you are a eukaryote. You, eukaryote. So you are an animal, you are a eukaryote. And also plants are eukaryote. An example of a prokaryote is a bacteria. Question number four, right? Give two advantages and two disadvantages, a light microscope and an electron microscope. Okay, I reckon this is probably one of the, the best questions you can ever get because you basically just got the same answer for both. So advantage of a light microscope is that it is portable. And the advantage, another advantage of a light microscope is it's cheap. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip across here and I'm going to do the disadvantages of an electron microscope is they are heavy, large, and the other disadvantage is they're expensive. Okay, so they just kind of go against each other really. Disadvantage of a light microscope is it has low magnification Okay, which means it can't zoom in particularly very much. And it has low resolution, right? which means the picture can't be very particularly very clear. You can't differentiate between individual points very easily. Zooming up here, the advantage of electron microscope is it has high magnification. And the advantage, another one, is it has high resolution so then you can distinguish very easily between two individual spots question number five right what are the names of the first five units of measuring length and how do we convert between so we go meter we go millimeter 
I'm just going to put mm in brackets. Then we go micro, and that is then kind of a U with an M. Then we're going to go nano, and that's like an N and an M. And then we're going to go pico, which is then a P and an M. Now we kind of miss out centimeters, because obviously centimeters goes around about there. Right, there's a good reason why I've kind of done it on this sort of order like this. If I'm going to convert from meters to millimeters, what I do is I times by a thousand. Okay, because there's a thousand millimeters in a meter. So if I'm going to convert from meters to millimeters, I'll times by a thousand. The next one is times by a thousand. The next one is times by a thousand. And the next one is times by a thousand. Then going in the opposite direction, what we've then got is. We've got, if I'm going to go me, uh, millimetres to metres, I'm going to divide by a thousand. And that one is divide by a thousand, divide by a thousand. Well, I can't even put a one in there. Divide by a thousand. All right, but the, thing, the main thing to remember on this is that order there. If you can remember that order there, right, and then remember as you go down the table, it's times, and go up the table, it's divide. Standard form, we've got one metre. That is then times 10 to the minus 3 metres, times 10 to the minus 6 metres, times 10 to the minus 9 metres, times 10 to the minus 12 metres. Question 6. What is the magnification equation in a triangle? Well, let's do this first. I like doing things backwards. I, A, N. That's divide. That's times. And it's the... AIM equation, AIM equation, All right? And what does it mean? The M is magnification. That equals image size divided by actual. Question number seven. Name three animal and three plant cells and how are they specialized? Okay, right, so let's do the animal first. Right, what colour we should do at the minute? Can we do them in the ready colour? Right, we'll do nerve, we'll do sperm, and we'll do muscle. Okay, I, I pronounce it as muscle because it's got a C in it. Right, now there are loads and loads of different versions you can have of this, right, like red blood cells, white blood cells. Okay, but these are the three main ones that ever picked on. How are they specialised? So a nerve is long. And it can conduct electricity. Electricity. A sperm it has a tail for movement. It has a nucleus with half the chromosomes. Um, and it has, in its head, it has kind of like an acrosome enzyme which then breaks into the egg itself and there are others like in the neck there's a large number of mitochondria for energy muscles it's the easiest one of them all all a muscle can do is contract right plant we've got root hair xylem and phloem okay now xylem you need to spell it's one of those words that the examiners expect you to be able to spell all right so i'll call it really stupidly x xylem all right root hair so what root hair does it has a large surface area okay so there's your normal plant cell and what a root hair is it's got a big long bit that sticks out that's all of a sudden what it is is a larger surface area for absorption xylem are dead they are made of lignin, and that's the substance that actually killed them. And they only allow transport or movement in one way. Phloem, their main specialism is sieve plates, which are kind of on the ends of each individual cell. And they allow two-way movement. List of uh, the organization of DNA, smallest to largest, right? So gene is the smallest. D 
DNA, chromosome, that's one word, but obviously I can't fit it in, nucleus, and cell. Okay, so your chromosomes are kind of the things that you always see as an X shape. Uh, inside the nucleus, you've got 46 chromosomes. Label the cell cycle. Right, so what I'm going to do is, this is your standard pie chart. I'm going to do a nice straight line with my ruler, a nice straight line there with my ruler, a nice straight line there with my ruler. This part here is called interphase. Okay, and that's kind of the part where everything sort of doubles. Everything doubles, the mitochondria doubles, the cytoplasm doubles, the cell wall, the cell membrane rather doubles. Everything just doubles within something. Okay, uh, and that is then kind of the growth phase. And it also where the DNA replicates. Okay, that's stage number one. Number two is this one here, which is mitosis. Right, so mitosis is where the nucleus divides. And number three is cytokinesis, which is cell division, which is the whole process in it. It's where the actual cell itself splits. Question number 10, right, this is based on that last diagram there, right, which is then draw mitosis with four chromosomes in the parent cell, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do big red, big red, and I'm going to do small green, small green, right, so then what happens is the green doubles up and becomes an X, the reds, I need to do them bigger, don't I? There. So what happens is where you've got your red chromosome like that, there's something in the middle, like a centromere in the middle. And what happens is you almost kind of grow an extra leg and an extra arm out the side. And this bit here, that strand there, is identical to that strand there. Then what happens? I need to go back to my reds. They line up. Is it pale green? Little X, little X. Amazing, really, to think that they actually line up. Then what they do is they split, and you get half going that way. It's like eyebrows there now. And half going that way. Okay, so they're kind of heading some down that way and some up that way. And then what we then do is we have two identical cells. Now, the biggest problem with my diagram that I've got here is that that is identical to that so they should be the same size so it should be that big and it should be that big it just didn't fit in the diagram perhaps number 11 what are the three types of stem cells we've got human embryonic okay they are in uh, an embryo we've got adult stem cells And we've got merry stems, right, that are in a plant. Right, there is also something called a pluripotent stem cell. That is then where what we've tried to do is we've tried to get, make human embryonic stem cells from adult stem cells. Number 12, what is the definition of diffusion? It is the movement of particles from a, an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. God, I can't write at all. And there's also no energy used, and it is down a concentration gradient. And a good name for no energy used is it's a passive process. 
13, right, what are the key factors that affect diffusion, right, so if you think if somebody walks in the room with perfume, how can those, that perfume molecules get around the room quicker? We've got temperature, we've got concentration gradient, we've got size of the particles, Right, uh, they're the kind of three that sort of uh, relate to um, the um, perfume walking in the room. Then we've also got surface area, and we've also got what it is actually in. So diffusion medium. So if it's in a solid, it's slower. If it's in a liquid, it's faster. And if it's in a gas, it's faster completely. So what is the definition of osmosis? Osmosis is the movement of water. Okay, so let's do that nice and loud. Okay, movement of water. Okay, from a dilute solution. That means there's a lot of water. To a more concentrated solution through a partially, sometimes put semi, permeable membrane. Okay, and this is then no energy and is therefore passive. Okay, so what is the definition of active transport? This is then the movement of particles from a low concentration, okay, so that means there's not very much of it, to a high concentration. And that is also across a partially or semi permeable membrane. And this time it does need energy. Okay, it's active, so it's going to need energy. Question number 16. All right, how is the small intestine adapted to improve its role as an exchange surface? So it's exchanging things, right? So it's exchanging things like uh, amino acids, uh, lipids, well, no, fatty acids, glycerol, glucose. So its adaption is it has villi, right? What villi are is they're like little hairs that kind of stick out of the inside of the small intestine. It has a good blood supply. It has a thin membrane. And then the reasons for these things is the good V or the V light give it a large surface area. The good blood supply maintains a concentration concentration gradient. And it also, a thin membrane gives it a short diffusion distance. Question number 17, all right. How are the lungs adapted as an exchange surface? Okay, so we're talking about with this, talking about carbon dioxide and water, right? And weirdly, we've got alveoli, right, which are kind of little bags at the end of the bronchi. We've got, same as we had before, a good blood supply and we've got a thin membrane right and those three the alveoli give it a large surface area okay just like the veli did before a good blood supply maintains a concentration gradient and a thin membrane gives it a short diffusion distance.
So in an exam, if ever they say exchange surface, there's a pretty good chance that those three things are then the things that are going to be asked about. Question number 18. Um, for the osmosis required practical, what are the independent and dependent variables? Okay, so don't forget, don't mess in class, stay calm. So dependent is what we measure during the practical. Independent is what we change between practicals. And then stay calm is our control, which means stay the same. So the independent variable is the concentration of sugar or salt, depending on which one you're using. Okay, so independent is what we change between practicals. Dependent is then we are changing mass, which ultimately is the percentage change in mass. Kind of the right mass. Question number 19. How is a leaf adapted to improve its role as an exchange surface? Now it's a little bit different, right? Because obviously it's in a plant, right? But what we have is the leaf is the adaption in itself. And what it has, it has a large surface area and it is also thin this gives it a short diffusion pathway right now we're on to the keywords okay so number one is the movement of substances from a more dilute solution to a more concentrated that has to be active Transport. Oh God, I can't write. The process where a cell becomes specialized to its function is differentiation. The difference in concentrations between two areas is the concentration of gradient. The spreading out of particles of any substance in solution or particles of a gas resulting in a net movement from an area of high without using energy is diffusion. Okay, so I see there's no energy used and I see there's no water in there, so it must be diffusion. A type of cell found in plants and animals that contain a nucleus is a eukaryote. A type of stem cell that can differentiate into any type of plant cell is a Mary stem. A type of cell division which produces two identical mitosis. The diffusion of water. I'm not even going to read any more of it. Osmosis. Loops of DNA found in the cytoplasm of prokaryote. Prokaryote is a bacteria, so that is a plasmid. A type of cell found in bacteria that does not contain a nucleus is a prokaryote. So any sort of cell like that, particularly a bacteria that there's no nucleus, is a prokaryote. The ability to distinguish between two different points on a specimen is the resolution. Remember, electron and light microscopes. Cells that are adapted to perform a specific function are specialized. The amount of contact an object has with its environment is its surface area. Sounds quite a complicated way of saying that. A series of stages preparing for the cell, the cell for division, is the cell cycle. Producing an embryo that has the same genes as its parent is therapeutic cloning. 